Hey, Tubies, this is Bob Hickman. It is always so good to be here with you. Well, I am so excited to be here. I know I'm getting this out a little late today, but I figure late, it's better late than never, okay? So I uh, tell you, last night we had a wonderful time at our uh, Saturday night seance. And if you haven't seen that, check that out. It's the video right before this one. I keep all my videos in chronological order. And if you enjoyed that seance, here's the book that I forgot to show you last night. Um, for those of you who haven't seen it, this is called Messages from Rose. It's one of my books that's published, um, and you can pick that up over at my website at robert-hickman.com. Just click on any of the book images. It'll take you to my Lulu store, and you can look at this and, and read a little bit about it and, and pick it up if you like. Uh, I would encourage you to read this. Um, you know, every week we're doing our weekly seance, and this will help you to get a better understanding of my work as a spiritualist medium, my work with Rose, and I think you'll just enjoy it. So pick up a copy. You know, it's a wonderful gift also to give to any friends who are interested in spiritual subjects. So now we're at the holiday season, Christmas, Yule, Hanukkah. Maybe you want to pick up a copy of Messages from Rose for a friend as well. Anyways, I hope you'll check it out. Well, I tell you, I am, I'm so glad you're here. And today I just want to spend a few moments in talking about um, an interesting subject. I get a, a lot of letters from people all over the world. And, you know, um, many of you know we started the Order of the Purple Cord. And um, if you've been following, you know, that's a, a an eclectic Wiccan order that I've started. I run it with Lady Angela Riddle. And, uh, you know, a lot of people have been writing and said, Psyche Bob, I'm interested in being part of the Order of the Purple Cord. I'm not Wiccan, but I'd like to learn. Can I be part of the order? And the answer is absolutely yes. We don't force anybody to be an initiated Wiccan or take vows. Just come and join and learn. Um, that being said, some of you are at a cross point uh, in your lives where you're really thinking about embracing Wicca as your path, or you're very curious to the point that you might be thinking you know, along the lines like, gee, maybe I should look at this religion seriously. Well, if you're thinking about it, um, let, we're going to talk about that today. Now, some of you are saying, well, say about how do I, how do I know if Wicca is right for me? Well, you know, that's a very good question. And I think when we talk about any sort of spiritual transformation, um, you know, I always say, join a faith, follow a practice, join a religion, but don't do it because somebody pressures you. Wicca uh, has a tradition. We don't really proselytize. You won't see Wiccans going door to door, preaching, saying you have to join Wicca, your soul depends on it. We don't proselytize because we believe in the craft that the spirit of the divine, the Lord, the lady, the gods, they bring somebody to the craft. So every Wiccan, in a sense, is called by the Lord and the Lady. And one of the things to know if Wicca, you know, is right for you is, do you naturally feel called to it? Do you feel like there's something that maybe you can't put your finger on, but it pulls you to it? Well, that is very well possibly the calling of the spirit of the Lord and the Lady. So, you know, listen to that. Now, you know, the Lord and the Lady, they don't, they're not like, you have to join, you have to be this. They simply offer their presence. So joining Wicca is not about compulsion. It's about a gentle leading, a sense of feeling in harmony. And I think that's very important because there are many faiths in the world today that really are demanding that somebody convert. And it's literally like convert our way or be destroyed. This is not the way of the Wicca. And if you encounter a Wiccan group that pressures you, like you have to be part of our group, you have to, that's not for you, see? And so this is why I say at the order of the Purple Core, we keep it very casual, it's very open. You can come and join, you can leave and go. 
you know, we want people to, to have a place where they can gather and be nurtured. And as I've mentioned in the future, we're going to start doing kind of group sessions online where we're going to have live teleconference calls and people can meet up. Uh, so you, you can do still be in your home and still be part of our order. So that's why I'm saying it's very casual. Now, for those of you who are saying, well, gee, Bob, you know, I really feel called to Wicca. Should I pursue this? Well, let me ask you something. Um, it seems to be very common among many Wiccans that the theme of witches, witchcraft, magic, the moon, fairies, these seem to be themes that pop up in Wiccans' lives, even before they become Wiccan. And many Wiccans I've talked to have said, you know, Bob, ever since I was a kid, I was mesmerized by the full moon. Every month I would just go out in the full moon my parents thought I was crazy. They'd be like, what are you doing in the yard at night? And as a kid, maybe you couldn't explain it. You just said, oh, I don't know. I'm just out here. But in your heart, you maybe felt a, felt a pull, felt a calling. See, that might be a sign that, that Wick is a, is a path for you. Um, some of you may have had recurring dreams. I know many Wiccans who've had dreams throughout their life that, uh, that they've been a witch. Uh, there's an old saying, once a witch, always a witch. And I, I think there's truth in that because it seems that many Wiccans that I encounter feel as if they've been a witch before. It's like familiar. And that's one of the things I would encourage you to do. Now, if you're kind of curious about this, take some time, study the language of Wicca, study the items of Wicca. Look at the images. Like, for example, back here, we've got the pentacle, okay? If you look at the pinnacle, does it speak to you? Does it draw you? Does it seem maybe somehow familiar or at least makes you want to know more about it? That could be a sign of a past life connection, you see. Um, you know, when we talk about the language of Wicca, there's a book here I want to show you guys. This is a, I don't know if you can still get this. It, it's kind of an older book, but look online. It's called The Witch Book. And it's called the Encyclopedia of Witchcraft, Wicca, and Neo-Paganism. This was put together by Raymond Buckland, who's one of the elders of the craft. Get a book like this. When I was first starting out, I bought every book I could find. Now, this book has a lot of articles on Wiccan themes, Wiccan subjects. Most of it, if you're brand new to the craft, you won't even know it, you, you know. But as you read it, you'll say, wow, I somehow feel connected. I know this. It seems right to me. That's another sign. So read about things that you know that you don't know about. That might be another way to know if Wicca is a path for you. Um, when I was starting out, the very first book that I read was Wicca by Scott Cunningham. Wicca, a guide for the solitary practitioner. <laughs> This is the very, very first Wiccan book I ever bought. This is, I think this is my actual original copy. It's, you can see it's literally falling apart. Um, the cover's coming off. But this is a book that you might want to consider. I, I personally recommend this. I think if you want to get a little view of Wicca, taste, and not be overwhelmed, this is a book for you. And I think they even still keep it. It has the same cover today. So... I recommend Scott Cunningham's Wicca, God for the Solitary Practitioner. When I sat down and read this book, every single word he said spoke to me. I thought, I know this is a path for me. That's been over 15 years now. Isn't that something? You know, read what you can. Um, another book, this one's a little more intense, but still very good. Green Witchcraft, Folk Magic, Fairy Lore, and Herbcraft. This is by uh, Anne Mora. You can see that down there. Anne Mora. She has a wonderful series of books. But if you're just starting out and you don't know anything, probably start with this one. Her other books build on it. And if you don't read this, it may be a little hard to follow. So that's another book. You know, when we talk about the craft, also throughout your reading, you know, reading is wonderful. But to know if the craft is for you, you also have to experience it. So I would encourage you, and in fact, Scott Cunningham uh, and Ann Mara in each of their books suggest setting up an altar. Um, in Scott Cunningham's book, the original altar is just very, very simple. 
he just shows the simple altar with a candle for the god, a candle for the goddess, and then a center place, which is for both, which generally he's, and here he talks about putting up an offering plate and spending time to see if you feel connected to the Lord and the Lady. So this is what I'm saying. It's like, if you're curious about the craft, you also have to do a little bit of personal exploration. Um, I've known people who have started into the craft. They've done the reading, they've done the altars, and somewhere along they say, you know what? I just don't feel it's for me. And that's okay. The craft is not a religion that is for everybody. You might start exploring it and suddenly you realize really in your heart of hearts you feel drawn to for example buddhism or hinduism or you know christianity or judaism and if you feel like you want to go to another path that's okay wicca is not here to hold it over you you have to stay with us we allow people to come and go freely but if you do the rituals and you're observing the moon and studying and learning the lore, and you're meant to be a Wiccan, you'll know pretty quickly, okay? So you do have to kind of practice it, you know? Another book here that I would recommend that I think is wonderful, well, there are two here. One is Ancient Ways, Remembering Pagan Traditions, and this is by Pauline Campanelli. Wonderful book. This is a hard book to find these days. Um, I think it actually, you know, actually, I do think it's still in print, but I didn't know that it was in print. And I was looking through used bookstores, couldn't find it. I think Llewellyn is still publishing this one. And then the follow-on companion to that is Wheel of the Year, um, Living in Magic, Living the Magical Life, also by Pauline Campanelli. Um, check Llewellyn, that's probably easier. I spent a lot of energy, as I said, going to used bookstores. I couldn't find it. I wanted it for years, but I do think they're still still in print now. So these are other books I would recommend as well. These are wonderful because she has a style that is very conversational. You feel like you're literally sitting in her kitchen and she's just talking about her daily life and her work and the craft. Wonderful books. You see, so if you're saying, is Wicca right for me, you know, also look inside your heart and ask yourself, do I feel dissatisfied with where I am spiritually? Now, we tell people in the craft, don't become a witch just to spite your family. You know, just because you say, oh, my family's all Catholic and I'm going to be a witch just to tick them off. That's not the reason to join the craft. Joining the craft is about a deep soul awareness. It's about how you relate to the world, how you relate to deity. And for everybody, these relations are very personal and in many cases very different. The craft is wonderful in that it does not dictate you must, thou shalt. We don't tell you even who you have to worship. Now, the craft does offer general guidelines. We say we believe in a Lord and a lady. We believe divinity has a dual form. Um, so how you define those dual forms is up to you, okay? There are some Wiccans who say they only believe in worshiping the Lord. Some say they only believe in worshiping the Lady. They're like the monotheistic Wiccans. That also is another path within Wicca. So don't let any Wiccan say, what, you, you only worship Diana? You're not a true Wiccan. It is traditional, as I said in the craft, to have a dual nature deity. But for some elements, some people in the craft, they see it differently. And we also do allow and respect those differences also. So joining the craft is something that's very deep, very personal. We don't believe in the craft in quick conversions. You know, in some churches, it's like you go in and they want to convert you within five minutes, boom, you're a member. It doesn't work that way in the craft. In the craft, um, there are two ways to join the craft. One is to be initiated into a coven, um, and a coven is a group of practicing Wiccans. It's like a congregation. Or the second way is to do self-initiation, and that's for somebody who likes to work on their own. Um, either way is valid, so don't let a Wiccan tell you, you can't be self-initiated. No, in Wiccan today, in the Wiccan community, that is recognized. Um, 
But the Wiccan tradition, as I said, does not believe in fast conversion. It believes that you have to take a year and a day. So even if you want to do a self-initiation, um, all the Wiccan texts and the Wiccan um, you know, elders say, if you really want us to accept you as a Wiccan and really be grounded in the faith, you have to wait a year and a day. So that's the tradition. You wait a whole year and then one extra day. Uh, and I guess that last day is to really test your patience. <laughs> I know it was for me. Um, but you see, when you go through the year, you really get grounded in the faith because Wicca is an experiential faith. And it means we connect with the cycles of the seasons. We know the earth. We know the moon. We know the phases of the moon. We know our bodies in relation to the craft. This is one of the things also that you may find in Wicca is that we are very body affirmative. And what that means is, is that we don't eschew the body. We don't eschew the world in the sense of ignoring it, of saying it's bad. Um, there are faiths that say, you know, purify the flesh in a sense of like crucify the flesh. You know, don't enjoy life, don't have any pleasures, sex is sinful. Craft doesn't say that. Craft says, honor yourself. And, and in the charge of the goddess, the goddess says, make music, make feasts, make love, all in my honor. You see, so there is celebration. We affirm life. We enjoy the body. Um, sexuality, how that's manifested, how you choose to be straight, gay, bisexual, celibate, all of that is honored in the craft. We are, as we said, life-affirming, body firming. So if you're at a place in your life where you're feeling like you're feeling repressed, like your religion makes you feel like you can't be who you truly are, then Wicca may be something you want to look at. Again, it'll take a year and a day to fully be a Wiccan. But if you allow yourself to walk that journey, you may discover some beautiful, well, you may not, you will discover some amazing and beautiful things. And even if you choose not to keep Wicca as your path, you'll have learned a lot and been blessed. Anyways, this is going to be part one. I think we're going to do two parts on this because there's more I want to say. But today I just wanted to come and start this discussion to answer questions. Some people have been writing to me and asking me, is Wicca right for me? So I hope you'll consider this. Be back here tomorrow on Monday. Uh, we're going to have part two of this. We're going to continue this discussion about is Wicca right for me? Anyways, guys, thanks for being here. Hope you like this favorite. Share it with your friends. Invite them to come to our spirit channel. If you're interested in the order of the purple cord, go over to my website at robert-hickman.com and you can read about the craft. Send me an email if you want to join. Also go to Lady Angela's website. Um, she has a wonderful collection of books there, ritual supplies. She'll help you also learn about the craft. She is the high priestess of the order. Um, and I'll put her links below as well. So go to Rare Wicca Spells. And also she has a YouTube channel. And she's operating the Facebook page, which I will soon be back on. Okay, so anyways, guys, I um, hope this gives you a little insight. Tell me in the box below, um, you know, if you're thinking about the craft, are you feeling drawn to it? Or maybe you're a longtime Wiccan. Maybe you want to share in the box below about how you knew that Wicca was right for you. I'd love to hear your thoughts and experiences. Thanks for being here. Be back here tomorrow, and we're going to continue the discussion. And I'll see you then. Blessings and good night.